This LOS is explained why effective duration is the most appropriate measure of interest rate risk for bonds with embedded options. Properties of bond duration. Callable bonds require the use of effective duration because Macaulay and modified yield duration statistics are not relevant. Put that in bold. And uh, the reason is because the bond can be called. Okay, we're going to see that down in the chart. But let's read the text first and then look at the chart. The yield to maturity for callable bonds is not well be defined because future cash flows are uncertain. Uh, the, the graph illustrates the impact of the change in the benchmark yield curve, change of curve, on the price of a callable bond uh, compared to that on uh, comparable to a non-callable bond. The two bonds have the same credit risk, coupon rate, payment frequency, and time to maturity. The vertical axis, of course, is the bond price. The horizontal axis is a particular benchmark yield. For uh, So that's the difference here. It's the benchmark yield. Uh, for instance, a point on the par curve uh, for government bonds, okay? Uh, so what we see here is the callable bonds. Remember, if the, if the rates decrease, what's going to happen? The bond can be called, okay? Uh, there's, a, there's a price at which the bond can be called. That's the right of the issuer, okay? The issuer has bought that right. So remember, the price of a callable bond is less than an option-free bond. We've learned that in previous LOS. Now, if rates decrease, the risk is that bond will be, will be called because the company then can refinance at a lower rate, and then you've got your principal back and rates are lower. So that's an interest rate risk uh, of callable bonds for the, for, the, for the holder. Okay, but if it's a non-callable bond, then we have the normal curve here, which is uh, showing the convexity, the, uh, you know, the curve is not straight. And again, I'll just change the color. Just to red here, you can see just to be clear, there's the shape of the callable bond here. So on the downside, it's similar, but as we get up to the decrease in the rates, you can see the shape is going to level off because that, ball, uh, that bond can be called, okay? Just take a quick screenshot here the, of the interest rate characteristics of a puttable bond, and we can see that the, uh, the uh, puttable bond is, gives the, uh, the bond holder the right but not the obligation to uh, uh, put the bond back to the issuer, okay? So we can see that there's still convexity in the curve. There's not negative convexity. Uh, and we can see that the value of the embedded put option uh, just puts the curve of the puttable bond above the curve of the non-puttable bond, okay? So that's important to understand. And we're just gonna finish this LOS with one quick practice question, which should be fairly easy. Which of the following most likely exhibits negative convexity? A, a puttable bond, B, a callable bond, or C, an option-free bond? Okay, when in doubt, guess B, because the correct answer is B again. Anyhow, um, a callable bond exhibits negative convexity, and we can see here I put in the uh, red box, the shape of the curve of the callable bond is the same as, uh, as the benchmark yields increase, but as they decrease, the bond can be called, so the shape of the curve changes, and we call that negative convexity, okay? You can see there's that's positive convexity there, and we saw with the puttable bond that it's still, there's convexity, it's just the puttable bond, the curve was above the uh, option-free bond. Um, you know that an option-free bond is still showing convexity, that one's easy. So A is uh, was wrong and C was wrong, and it's the callable bond that has the negative convexity, and that's where the curve starts to um, change shape and move towards the price at which the uh, bond would be called, okay? That's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.